Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to our live webcast studio. It's a pleasure to see you again. It's been a while since we did our last live webcast, and that was our live release webcast of Capture 2019. Before the webcast tonight, you could see some nice lighting design images um, shifting by before, before we went live here. Those were from the Australian Pink Floyd Tour, lighting design by Tom Mambi. Tom had submitted these images of the lighting design to our showcase reward program, which you can read more about uh, on our website if you follow the link in the uh, top right corner. Sorry, my um, disconcentration here. Um, if you enter the showcase reward program, you have a chance of winning a free upgrade of your capture license to the next major release. Now the next one, of course, is 2020, so it's, it's far away at this point, but Tom, of course, got a free upgrade to 2019. In order to enter the reward program, there's a few things we need you to submit. You can read about them on the submission page. If we do choose your submission for uh, extra publicity, then, of course, apart from showing up on the uh, uh, showcases page on our website, you will also be promoted on our social media channels, that is Facebook, Twitter, yeah, Facebook and Twitter, and here, of course, uh, in the live webcast, which also goes on YouTube, so there's three, actually. Um, so it's easy, please, please do submit your work, share what you've done in Capture with the other users. Speaking about the other users, we've had a chance of meeting quite a few of you recently uh, at the uh, Pro Light and Sound show in Frankfurt. This is three, four weeks-ish ago, where we had our own stand, as usual, um, in Frankfurt. This is the only trade show where we have a stand of our own these days, actually. So it's, it's a great opportunity to meet all of you and for all of you to meet all of us. Um, and, of course, we'll be back next year again. If you had uh, watched our release webcast of 2019, you might actually recognize the design of the booth as uh, we were showing the capture project file for it in the 2019 release webcast. So tonight we are going to take a look at a number of capture 2019 features. I'm even going to show you a few very basic things of how to get your show up and running in, in Capture 2019. We have changed quite a few things since, well, if you look back since Capture Nexum when we did our tutorial videos the last time. So I think there is a, a nice opportunity to point out uh, how easy it is to draw something from scratch in Capture. Please, if you have any questions regarding Capture 2019, Capture in general, or even an older Capture version, uh, just write below in the comment field, and I'll try to cover these questions throughout the webcast. I've got an iPad right next to me here where I can read your questions, and hopefully I'll have a chance to answer all of them. So I have a number of things I want to, to go through and show to you. Uh, we have a few questions already, which is great, so I might as well cover one right away. Um, the question is from uh, Andy Jones. He's asking whether the um, fixture libraries will still be compatible. Andy has Capture 2018, and obviously we released Capture 2019, so he's wondering what happens with the libraries. So on the download page, on our website, you can always download the latest fixture library or the latest library because it has more than just fixtures. It's got truss filters, scobos, and whatnot. That download on the main download page is for Capture 2019. That's our current product. If you go to the archive section of our website, that is, it's on the right-hand side, uh, there's a link section where it says archive. If you go in there, it requires you to log on to the website. But if you go in there, 
you will find downloads of the old capture versions as well as the latest library files for these versions. So there are actually separate downloads for each capture version available and they are all updated every night. The difference is in Capture 2019, for instance, we have some features that are not available in the older capture versions. So fixtures may behave slightly differently in the different libraries, but it all comes down to what these versions of Capture can do. And our policy is to maintain libraries for up to, I think it's five years from the end of a product. So Capture Polar is going to reach that limit during this year, actually. So if you have Capture Polar, you will need to upgrade to Capture 2019 this year, or when Capture 2020 comes, you will not be able to, to simply buy the upgrade, then you will have to purchase from scratch again. Fortunately, the vast majority of Capture users have upgraded since Capture Polar, so there's very few who have actually stayed with such an old version. So, short answer made very long, the libraries are compatible. So, hey, there's the end of the world. Let's stay inside the world. Right, let's move on um, to some of the things I wanted to show you in Capture. So let's um, place me inside a computer. Um, this base view of Capture Although we do have a new layout now, which is called the, uh, the wide layout. Now, we did receive some feedback about the wide layout that it's difficult to use, for instance, the, the library tab here uh, on a full HD screen. And the reason for this is that the wide layout simply is not designed for a regular full HD screen. It's designed for larger screens. So if you have the ultra wide, I guess it's called, when it's larger than 16 to 9 aspect ratio, or if you have a 4K screen, that's when the wide layout comes in handy. So in the laptop scenario here with, with Full HD, I will stick to the, the traditional quad layout because that is the one that works best in this layout. So we've always had, always, well, actually, yes, always had access to the library in the project window down here in the bottom right corner. Um, very few things have changed with regard to this. In Capture 2019, I would say one of the major changes was that you can see the objects you're adding into the design as you're dragging them. Um, this may seem as a, a simple thing, but it's, it's actually very valuable. Um, let's add a bit of trussing as well here. So as I'm dragging truss pieces out of the library, they now snap right away in the view. This makes it a lot easier to construct things. Ah, we also have to do the right thing. Um, this makes it a lot easier to construct things in Capture where you need to take different types of things from the library. In previous versions of Capture, you would have first have to drag them out, drop them, and then snap them where you wanted them to be. So this is a lot easier now in Capture 2019. Now, as a result of, of this type of behavior, the quick copy function that we have now also snaps instantly. This means that it's faster than ever to build a truss construction or multiply fixtures because the fixture will snap the moment you hang it. So let's insert a fixture. Um, let's take something plain, a generic PAR64 with a filament bulb, although, although banned from reality for environmental reasons in the computer, we can use as many as we want without hurting the environment. So filaments in the virtual world. So now when I use the quick copy function, you see that the fixture snaps to the trussing right away. So this makes it faster than ever to make quick sketches. Um, maybe you want to work in the, the plot view. You don't even care about the 3D world. You just want to draw your fast napkin version uh, plot. So this is really nice uh, in Capture 2019. 
So I'm checking some questions here. All right, fair enough. Um, I'll show you a few more things before I go on with the questions. The next new thing I want to show you in Capture 2019 is the brand new control pane. Um, it pops up from the bottom left corner and it's resizable. So I'll maximize the view here. It has all the controls you would expect that we had before. It has a few new ones and it has a few ones that can do more than we could before. Now one feature that I like a lot are the new light on and off buttons. These are great with moving lights where you have chosen a gobo, you've mixed some color, maybe you've made shutter cuts, but you just quickly need to turn off some fixtures because you're doing a focus. Uh, and the lamp on and off just turns the lamp on and off without touching any of the other controls or settings of the fixture. Of course, we have a dimmer slider uh, for the park hands. We have the filament angle rotation. Um, nothing new there, really. Uh, what is nice with profiles, which I will show you in a moment, is the shutter cut. So actually, let's, let's take a look at one thing that we get commonly asked, and that is, how can I replace or exchange or swap fixtures? Um, in Capture 2019, we introduced a new replace mode. The idea is that when you are in the replace mode and you bring things in from the library, you're doing it with intent to replace something. Um, the real reason we introduced this is actually another, but let me show you how it works. So let's, let's replace some of the park hands with a source for 36 degrees. I need to go into the replace mode. So I select, in this case, the fixtures I wish to replace. I click on the cog wheel and choose replace. Now you can see that the icons changed a bit here. There is an exit button to the right here because I'm in the replace mode. I can grab a source for and drop it on any of these three fixtures. And now they are all replaced for source force. Now, when I'm in the replace mode, I can actually drag and drop a fixture on another fixture that is not selected as well. Um, or I can select the group of fixtures that I wish to replace. So there is some flexibility in the replace mode, but the moment you have deselected all fixtures or hit the exit button, then you're back in the regular design mode. So now that we have some uh, profiles here, we have shutter cuts available. So this is one of the nice new features in Capture 2019 that you can do multiple shutter cuts at the same time. And by multiple, I mean the same shutter cut with more than one fixture at the same time. So let's take a quick break here and answer a question or two. So as I said, please um, bombard us with questions throughout the webcast. We're taking an unexpected turn and uh, we will talk a little bit about licensing. David asks, capture licenses are personal and grant the owner the rights to use an edition of a product on two of his person's computers. Does it mean that I can use one license with my mate? Great question. So the licenses are personal, which means that you are responsible for your license and that is installed on your machines. Now, if you bring all of your mates over for the evening to do some lighting programming in front of the TV or in your studio, and that is perfectly fine. Or if you want to lend your laptop to your mate over the weekend, that is perfectly fine too. But the license remains yours and the computer needs to be yours. So it's not okay to lend your license for your mate's laptop over the weekend, because that would be different as Basically, there's no good way of uninstalling a license. So once your mate has lent your license, you've basically given your license to your mate, which would be very nice for your mate, of course, but we don't like that. Um, we have, I thought we had another license question, um, but I think I confused myself. But we have a question from Anthony. 
He asks, when I render a scene, my computer crashes, what can I do to fix this? Usually when the computer crashes, it's for one of two reasons. It's either that the drivers are old and there are some issues with them. Um, sometimes with brand new computers, um, the first drivers have some, um, we, we say in Sweden, we say baby issues. Um, so there are issues in the beginning of, of the software or whatever it is you've purchased. So if you have a brand new computer, then make sure you, the first thing you do is go and get the latest drivers for that computer because there will, are bound to have been issues that have been worked out. The second reason for computer crashes is, is usually that you've pushed your video card beyond its limits. And these limits are actually set up to prevent softwares from hanging or overpowering your computer in a sense. So when the video card thinks it's got too much to do, it's just table flips and says, I'm not having it. And it looks as if capture crashes. What you need to do then is either reduce the rendering settings in your visualization so that you are not pushing the graphics card that hard. Or if you are rendering images, you can use the, let me show you. Um, you can use the minimize memory usage checkbox here. This has actually got a hidden effect as well in that it reduces the pressure on the video card. Um, so if you're getting crashes, first thing you do is you try the minimize memory usage. If that doesn't help, then make sure that you do not use maximized rendering settings. And if all of that fails, then you may have to consider upgrading your hardware. And you could also contact us if it if you think your hardware is powerful and something weird is going on, it, it is possible that there is a software issue, but generally speaking, this is not the case, to be honest. Um, all right. So let's go back to the example uh, we have here. We've added some truss to to the scene and I chose to use the generic truss from the library. Now in Capture, all of the trusses are dynamic, which means they are not CAD drawings that we have placed in the library. Um, the truss geometry is generated based on the dimensions and specifications of the truss. As such, it's not perfectly accurate. And we got a question here uh, from John Rosley. Uh, whether the trust library will be more accurate someday. Now, generally speaking, the answer is no. We are not very likely to start importing um, super exact CAD files for each trust part. However, we are making the trusses more detailed. Um, with Capture 2018, we introduced more um, bracing information. So whether you have zigzag braces or um, I think orthogonal is the name, uh, straight braces on the sides or on the top and such, so that they look more accurate on the plots. Um, but no, we are likely not going to go all in uh, on the trussing uh, at the time being. Of course, you can always import a drawing of a truss if you need it to be super accurate in that respect. So moving on, <coughs> excuse me. We replaced some parkans with profiles. Uh, we did some shutter cuts. Um, we have the new control pane open here. And as I mentioned, we can now do shutter cuts of more than one fixture at a time. Another new thing in Capture 2019 is the focus mode. Now, a lot of our users didn't, couldn't find how to focus fixtures properly. Uh, especially on the Mac where many users um, have not discovered the, either the right mouse button click or control clicking. So there is now a new focus mode, which allows you to use your left mouse button to focus the lights. This is actually quite convenient in many cases. And 
one of the benefits here is that it prevents you from accidentally selecting the stage. Now at this point I can only click either on stage or on a fixture, but I cannot accidentally select anything else. So actually it's quite a convenient mode and it's of course great for new users who haven't discovered the right mouse button, which you can also use to focus fixtures. So you simply select the fixture and right click where you want to focus it. So we have faster editing, we have immediate snap when we drag from the library, we have the new control pane with new functions like multi shutter cuts, um, we have great new tools for choosing colors of fixtures, especially LED fixtures, which could be difficult to control in 2018. So I'm going to talk a little bit about another feature we have in Capture that is called Snapshots. Snapshots allow you to record DMX and playback DMX within Capture, so you can't send it out in any way but you can save looks in Capture and recall them. Now, in order for that to work though, you need to patch the fixtures. So a question we commonly get is, you've recorded snapshots, you play them back, but nothing happens. And that would happen if you haven't patched your fixtures. So let's patch the fixtures we have here. Let's just drag and drop them into the first universe. Um, I have a hog link here that I will disable. Now, if I turn all of them on, I can go to the Snapshots tab and record a snapshot. Let's have a still snapshot, look one. And in look two, let's take three of the lights out and record look two. Now we have two looks that we can jump between. While I'm playing back a look, we have a stop button here. So if I stop look two now, there are no play or stop buttons. Uh, so we are back in, in the standard state where I could be receiving DMX from a console, for instance. So if I select all of these and black them all out, I now have two looks that I can jump between. And when I stop playback, I'm back in the blackout. And this requires me to patch the fixtures because what we are recording is actually the DMX values. Now, one feature which some users haven't found is the ability to recall the DMX of a look. So if you wanted to bring back a look and build upon it, you can use the recall function. Now I'm not in a playback state. I've brought back the DMX values and I can continue working on that look. Uh, so that is a valuable tool. The only catch with the recall is that you can only recall DMX. So if you had a look with video and lasers and things like this, then you would only be able to recall the DMX. Let's take a question. Uh, Roy Arnevold is asking whether we have autofocus with Obsidian Desks, the, the Onyx system. Um, the answer is no, we do not yet at least. Um, Capture is fully prepared for this and we are working closely with Obsidian uh, on adding this or helping them add this to, to their system. But I can't give you any dates or anything like that. I have to leave that to Obsidian to, uh, to tell you. So please check with Obsidian, um, but it's coming, but I can't tell you when, sorry. Um, we have a couple of update and license questions. Uh, Rene Smail is asking, he's got the Capture Atlas solo and he's considering upgrading to Capture 2019 Duet. And he's asking the cost of the two upgrades. Um, I don't have them uh, off the top of my head, but if you go to our web page to the products page and you scroll down to the bottom, there are two tables. One of them will show you the price to upgrade Capture Solo to 2019, which I think is 99 euros. 
And then there is the upgrade price from Solo to Duet, which is in another table on the same page. And I know it's the difference in price between the new licenses, but I don't have it uh, at the top of my head. Um, a colleague of me th says it's 400 euros. So the total would be 499 euros in that case. Um, and for anyone asking about other combinations, take a look at that webpage. Anthony Lee is asking, what is the proper way to update Capture? Uh, if by update you mean getting the, the latest bug fixes, then that would be to download Capture from the download page. If you're asking about upgrading uh, to Capture 2019, then you can do that either in our web shop or through any of our resellers. And they should also be help, able to help you with any pricing questions you might have. Uh, finally, what is the cost for upgrading from Argo Basic Edition? So the Argo, back in Argo days, we didn't have the Solo Duet Quartet Symphony. We had Solo Basic Extended. And the Basic Edition is treated as the Quartet Edition today. So the upgrade from Argo Quartet is as from after 2018, sorry, I mixed it all up. Going from Argo Basic as, is as going from Quartet to the latest version, um, which is another number I don't have off the top of my head at the moment. Um, all right, let's save a few questions for later here and move on with my examples. I talked a little bit about recording snapshots and patching fixtures. So let's take a look at something else that is a bit new in Capture 2019. First, I'll bring all of the profiles down here uh, on the floor and we'll add another object from the library. I will go for a staircase, which is under stages apparently. So I drag the staircase into the design. This is actually pretty similar to what we did um, on the release webcast, but that doesn't mean it's not a good thing to show. So we have a staircase now in a pretty boring uh, whitish color. Um, the fixtures, are, of course, are very warm, which is why it looks rather yellow on my screen, which would normally uh, so on the computer screen, anything that is 6,500 Kelvins would appear white. Uh, and one, or the way we can adjust this in Capture 2019 is by going into the view properties and the white balance setting. So I have fixtures here which are much closer to 3,200 Kelvin. So if I bring the white balance down to 3,000, well, I can even write 3,200 here. Then if the fixtures are 3200 Kelvin, we will now get the pure white on the computer screen for these fixtures. This is basically what happens as your eye has adapted to um, the white temperature in the scene after a while. This is kind of how we perceive it. Another new feature in 2019 is the material color picker. So assuming we wanted to paint this staircase, in a color. We would start with adding a material and then drag and drop that onto the staircase. Nothing happened here now because the color is the same default grayish or whitish color that the staircase had to begin with. But with our live color picker, we can now adjust the color and see it live in the visualization as we're doing that. Now, if you remember, from another webcast we did, I showed you this teeny tiny little thing. This is the NCS color pin. It's a color scanner that I can hold onto any surface. So I have a color swatch with me here, the RAL color swatch. So if you have a color you want to replicate, you hold your color scanner onto the surface, you press scan, and then in your 
mobile phone using the color pin app, you get the code for the color. So you might get it as RGB, but you could also get it as LAB. And the benefit with LAB is for the more saturated color, like the vivid oranges or a vivid green, you actually go beyond the sRGB color space. So with the color pin and the LAB values from that, you can reproduce some very vibrant colors in the visualization that was not possible before with the plain RGB color picker. So this level green staircase here, which in reality would look incredibly vibrant, sort of nature vibrant, would not have been possible before our new color picker. Question time. Sven Bovens is asking whether there is a way to clone and mirror truss. So I know Sven is, Sven is mostly just interested in the cloning question, or sorry, the mirror part, I think. So cloning, yes, you simply select the items you want to clone and you can use the quick copy function to clone them. So that is dead easy. What we don't have yet is a mirroring function. Uh, we know it's very commonly requested and we are sort of working on bringing a clone function in the future, but there are a lot of very difficult questions to answer in the process as with cross construction, for instance, there are some pieces that simply cannot be mirrored. They actually have to be replaced for a completely different trust piece from the library. Uh, so there are some questions to tackle there. So in the future, hopefully. Uh, Cade is asking, how long till we see an option to change the default of the Mac mouse slash trackpad to make it behave like previous versions? Excellent question, Cade. So we are actually putting a, an update release of Capture 2019, which will be called 2019 Mark 1, to the beta testers tomorrow. So beta testing of 2019.1 starts tomorrow, and this does include a feature where in the options, you will be able to disable trackpad paneration. Trackpad paneration is a feature on the Apple trackpads where using two fingers, you can panorate or orbit uh, the camera and capture. Unfortunately, with the magic mouse, now I don't have the magic mouse here, I have a, a, a plain regular mouse, but with the magic mouse, there is actually a trackpad surface on top of it. And this used to behave as a zoom function. Um, and thanks to the new trackpad features, that is quite annoying. So this goes to beta test tomorrow, and I would say hopefully within two weeks, we will have a general release of that, which will has an option to, to turn that off basically. So it will behave just as before. Um, Roy Arne is asking, is it possible to enter, for example, the height you want to insert a truss? or the missing coordinate as it's called in some other systems. Yes, it is. So if I insert a truss from the library, let's take another generic rectangular section. You may notice that there is a button down here in the right corner. It's got three axes and an arrow. This is actually the missing coordinate function. If I click this button, I can say that I want my trusses at six meters. Apply and remember means for this truss and the next one. So now that I add another truss piece, this too appears on six meters. This button is only visible right after you have inserted something from the library. So that is the, uh, the important thing to keep in mind. If you use the quick copy function, then the copy of the object will be at the same height as the object you are copying regardless of the missing coordinate. That only applies when adding things from the library. In addition to that, I might also add that if you add a fixture, now even though the height set now is six meters, 
So if I drop a fixture in space, it ends up at six meters. But if I drag and drop it onto a truss, it's because it snaps to the truss, that applied missing coordinate height doesn't, doesn't apply anymore. So again, short answer made long. Use the fifth button that appears right after you drop something from the library. David is asking uh, whether we have any plans to allow custom exposure tuning for chosen fixtures. This is actually also a feature of 2019.1 that will be available in a couple of weeks. This has a fixture property. Um, so right along the, uh, this is a bad example fixture. Let's take a moving head. Let's have an MMX blade. So there are a number of properties in selected items here where I can tune the fixture to some extent. Now one here is the invert color mix, which because obviously you can do that through the dip switches or the menus on the fixture. But we are adding three more properties here. One is intensity scaling, which is the answer to David's question. So you can actually fine tune the intensity of the fixture. And the other two are inverting zoom and iris as well, because if those are wrong for any reason in the library, then they are absolute showstoppers. Um, and you need to be able to fix them quickly to move on. In a future version of Capture, whenever you apply any sort of library correcting um, features like this, then you will be given an opportunity to submit this to us so we can take a look at it. Although at this point, we are quite confident that we have all the data in the library correct with respect to the manufacturer's documentation. Um, unfortunately, manufacturers also make mistakes. So even though it's correct according to spec, occasionally it's still an issue. So in a couple of weeks, you will be able to do that, David. Um, let's see, what do we have left? How much time do we have? Yes, let's skip that and move on to rigging point coordinates. So this was a highly anticipated feature for Capture 2019. The ability to have coordinates of rigging points visible in the plot. We did two things. First of all, we took the rigging point symbols in the library and moved them into the built-in section because they have special functionality. So we have three rigging point symbols here that you can use as you wish. You would drag and drop them into the design. Uh, I usually place them slightly above the truss to make sure it draws above it. You could also use layer priorities to, to accomplish that. Now what is new is the show coordinate option for the rigging point. <coughs> Excuse me. This automatically adds the coordinate of the rigging point in the annotation next to it. Keep in mind, you can move this and rotate it. So if you enable the uh, paper adjustments in paper mode, you can move the annotations as well as rotate them. And if you use the shift key, you can snap the rotation to make sure you have them nice and tidy. Another Similar kind of feature that we added is the show trim height option for the truss. Uh, this shows the trim height, obviously, of the truss. So that is the lowest point of the truss on the y-axis. Um, so if you had a, say, a tilted truss, it would be the lowest point of the tilted truss. And while we are on the topic of the plots, let's take a look at something else that we did in Capture 2019. That is, we cleaned up the optics of primarily park hands, uh, where 
you are more interested in the, in, the, in the name of the optic rather than all the degrees uh, and wattages. So as I change the optics of the Parkan here to let's say a, an EXG, it simply says EXG in front here rather than the rather long text that we used to have before. It might seem as a small detail, but it's, it makes a big difference to the readability of the paperwork, obviously. So let's take a look at another question. Peter is asking, he's running capture on his MacBook Pro, but the frame rate drops dramatically when he goes into live mode. He only uses 20 fixtures, so he guesses his MacBook is not adequate and wonders what PC he should buy for his capture setup. Excuse me for a second. This is an excellent question and a difficult one to answer. Generally speaking, the video cards in PCs are more powerful than the video cards in the Macs for reasons only Apple can answer really. Um, so by choosing to buy a PC, you are probably better off um, horsepower wise for the video card to begin with. What I would recommend is you go to a web page called videobenchmark.net and you look up the video card that your Mac has today. And then you look at the other video cards and although it is not based on capture testing, it's close enough. So if you see a video card that is four times faster in their chart, then you can rely on that for capture as well. So then go and find a laptop which has this or a video card in the same performance range and you should be safe. If possible, go to a computer store, bring a USB stick with you with the downloaded capture demo and ask to install it. I, usually they will not refuse this. Uh, and then you can actually test the performance of the laptop in the store and that is the best way to be sure it's good enough. Pierre is asking whether we have any improvements in sight for the distance measurement tool. Um, we do wish to improve it. So the distance measurement we have today is in the library, it's called distance. And you would drag and drop it into the design. Now, some users have not discovered that you can double click on the arrows to place them in order to measure a specific distance. You can also type in a distance here and effectively use it as a sort of construction geometry. So if you then want to place the next truss at a specific offset, you can do that uh, like this. So there are actually two ways to use the, the distance measurement in capture today. One is as construction geometry, and the second is to measure actual distances. Now, some users have asked us for a faster measuring tool. It's something that is on our drawing board, but is not complete yet. So for the time being, you will need to drag and drop the distance from the library. Andy Taylor is asking, how easy is it to get trust pieces added to the library? Currently, there don't seem to be any Thomas GP1218 corner blocks. So, Thomas GP1218. Yeah. So, actually, it's that easy. What you do is you send an email to library at capture.se and you say which trust pieces you believe are missing from the library and within normally one to three days we will have them added in the library and you can download a new update for the library from our web page. So usually it's very easy, especially if it's from any of the major manufacturers because then we have all the specs readily available anyway. Uh, Pia Alain is asking whether we can add an all print plot function. What I think uh, Pierre is after is when you have created multiple plots and you want to print them all together. 
So this is something that is relatively high on our priority for an upcoming release of Capture. Uh, at the moment, you do need to print them one on one. Uh, but we are well aware of uh, the need for such a function indeed. Uh, Lior is asking, hi Lior, uh, is asking whether a recording of this video will be available and the answer is yes. You can watch this video afterwards here on Facebook, but also on YouTube um, where it will also be available in a higher resolution actually because Facebook limits us to 720p, whereas on Facebook you get more pixels. Raphael Furch is asking whether he can rotate truss and then snap them. So that is actually a very good question. So let's take a generic rectangular piece here, a corner. Now, what happens in capture when it snaps truss is that it tries to snap the closest possible combination. So if the truss looks like this and you bring them together to snap, you can be sure that this end here will snap here. This means you can actually prepare a truss piece before the snap to better know which end will snap together. This might not be that interesting with a single truss piece, but you might have a um, pre-rigged truss with fixtures on them already and you want to make sure that the right end ends up when you snap. So then yes, you can pre-rotate the trusses and the closest snapping point is used by capture. This is why if I want to snap this end here to the end here, it's better to approach from below because then this point here of the corner becomes close to this point here of that truss and it rotates counterclockwise um, to the right point here. So yes, Raphael, you can rotate the truss before you snap them. Martin is asking whether you could keep plot templates from one project to another. So let's assume for a moment that I'm very happy with this design, so I will save it to my desktop as design A. Now I may be working on a new design tomorrow and go, hmm, that nice plot I had yesterday, I'd like to have that in this design as well. Then you can use a function that is called import project content. You can select the design from yesterday and then choose which elements you want to bring into today's design from yesterday's design. So if I include the plots here, those two, albeit empty, but those two plots I created yesterday have now been imported into this project file. Some users create like a template project file that they always start from scratch with uh, to have the same set of layers and plots um, in their designs. This is a complement or an option to use the import project content to achieve the same thing if you didn't remember to start from your template project. So I think we are coming to the end of the session today. We've had a lot of great questions. Uh, there's at least one more here we can round off with. It's from Ralph. He's asking whether we could have more shortcuts, uh, specifically mentioning the X keys. Um, this is something we are working on for the next version, the next major version of Capture, uh, or we will start working on soon anyway. Um, that is a shortcut editor. So the ability for you to choose which shortcuts to have for which functions. Because the fact is we've tried to use shortcuts that are on the left hand side of the keyboard because most users are right handed. So with your left hand on the keyboard, if you can use two keys on the left hand side for the shortcuts, then you are more efficient than if you have to use both hands. And we are running out of key combinations on the left hand side. So we will need you to be able to prioritize your shortcuts. 
and the shortcut editor will be vital. And we will be looking at things like X keys and a few other similar devices. I don't remember their names off the top of my head, but there are a few similar sort of custom keyboards that you can use for different kinds of shortcuts. And finally, uh, the last question for tonight, Luis is asking whether you can connect simultaneously with o Onyx as with um, CITP with Avolites. Um, at not yet, no, so the answer is no right now, but it is being worked on. Uh, for the time being, though, you can use ArtNet and Streaming ACN to get DMX over into Capture. So, that concludes our webcast for tonight. Thanks everyone for watching and thank you for all your great questions. Um, I'm confident we will have at least one more open question session like this uh, this year in the live webcast. Um, so I look forward uh, to that and um, thank you for watching us tonight. Good evening. <laughs>